This is Andy Schaefer's at Acuity. Some of our turning customers are beginning to explore the new prime turning technology from Sandvik. So in this demo, we'll show you what you need to do to use NX Cam to create the specialized tool paths that are required to make prime turning work correctly. Because it's a new technology, I'm going to start with a few slides to introduce uh, the important factors to making this technology work but it will be a quick overview. There's a lot of information out there on the web right now, including in the June issue of Modern Machine Shop, a pretty extensive article. So let's get started with our overview. Here are the A and B variants used with the prime turning system. A is obviously a smaller insert, gets into tighter spaces, a uh, little more restriction though on the feed rate and depth of cut that are possible. B, a much, much better choice for roughing. These are uh, non-ISO inserts, although they sort of look like ISO inserts, but you can see there's a compound angle on here. For instance, on the B variant, there's a little wiper that's formed here on the, on the edges. This slide shows a comparison to conventional turning in blue, the prime turning in red, whereas on this corner, if we were doing conventional, we'd be going into the corner, down the face. We're going the opposite direction with prime turning, and that is essentially to take the load off the nose of the tool. So our chips are going to be formed here on this edge. By using this, uh, this small leading angle here, uh, we move or spread our chip load out over a wider area of the cutting edge, uh, making it last longer. Now, many of us who have used manual lathes in the past have taken an insert of this type and run it backwards. Um, and it does cut, but usually what we find is you're going to get chatter and you're going to get long stringy chips. So the Sandvik people then have solved those problems and other problems with this insert, insert technology. Just a, a review then, uh, you see a substantial difference in the depth of cut and a slight improvement here in the feed rates that are possible. Uh, but beyond that, though, you can cut your tool changes and uh, just the number of tools you have to have loaded because of the flexibility of this insert to handle a, a wide range of different geometry types. Similar situation with the B variant. Uh, we're cutting here in the uh, opposite direction. And <coughs> in this case, uh, we've got pretty similar depths of cut, but the feed rates are, are substantially different. Here are test results for the A variant, uh, the conventional insert at 13 minutes. Uh, you can see it took 57 minutes to create a similar wear on the A variant. Here's the B variant at 18 minutes, the conventional insert's worn out. Uh, we're still running at 100 minutes with the B variant. This is also a real nice view of the chip breakers and that compound angle with the little wiper here at the bottom. So let's review what makes this technology successful. It's the small entering angles that allow the uh, chip to be formed on a greater area of the edge. We're protecting that corner. We're saving time, tool changes by using the same tool for roughing and finishing. And we're able to get into more areas of the part. And uh, the chips aren't jamming up in the corners because we're moving away from the corners. Here's that entering angle in more detail. You can see how the wear then is concentrated on the edge and not the nose of the part. So prime turning can offer a lot of advantages, but we want to carefully select the jobs and situations where we use prime turning. We're looking for rigid components and parts of components. We need machines that are rigid where we've got a lot of torque and horsepower and if our uh, length to diameter ratio is large at all, we need a live center or a tail stock on that part. So here's uh, some parts off to the left side that are gonna be more suitable and parts off to the right side, we see the, the long thin part with no live center, that, that's not gonna be successful with prime turning. And here's some actual images of some parts that you can uh, successfully turn using this technology. At this point, let's move back to NX and do the demo uh, showing the actual toolpath creation. There's certainly a lot of videos out on the web right now showing this prime turning technique. And it appears that uh, when they're cutting into a corner like this, they're just plunging right in. But uh, if you can look closer, uh, actually they're not doing that. If we plunge in, 
what we're going to do is break that nose of the tool down really quickly, which is what we're trying to avoid. So in fact, to uh, make the prime turning technique work successfully, we've got to add a, a, tan a little arc and enter the work piece tan tangentially. But we need to do something else. We've got to slow our feed rates down as we're doing that lead in. So we can see here on the screen, uh, I should point out this is our teach mode. And uh, some of it's kind of going off the top of the video here, so let me fix this. Um, so you see the feed rate right here in yellow. We're going to begin, uh, here's our, our traverse move, uh, the dash blue. Here's our engage move in yellow, and that's uh, 0 0.012, 12 thousandths of an inch per rev. And that feed rate's going to continue down into this larger arc. That gets us engaged. Then we switch to our cutting feed rate of 20 thousandths of an inch per revolution. But then uh, as we get to the end, we're going to do something a little different. And I probably got this exaggerated a little bit, but we need to slow the feed rate down before we get to the end. And when I say exaggerated, I mean it, it didn't have to be this far back. I was just trying to indicate uh, that we do need to make a, a transition back to the 12 thousandths of an inch per rev feed rate before our cutter exits the part. Now, uh, we're just looking at the, uh, the cutter path itself. Let's uh, verify now so we can see the actual tool. Now if I switch back uh, from tool to assembly, uh, you see our ISO insert. Um, so this is the way we uh, can uh, create the tool path using an ISO standard insert. But then when it's time to uh, simulate and uh, validate, we want to switch back to the assembly so that we see the actual shape of that B variant uh, tool that we're using uh, for this tool path. Okay, so I've just got something really simple here. We're trying to uh, cut into this corner and rough some material away. So let's go back now to the entire program. And let's uh, tool path verify. So these are just three passes uh, successfully deeper. We've got it switched to um, 2D rem material removal, and let's play it. So our lead-in move, although it, you know, going real quickly, it appears to be plunging. We're actually arcing in, and again, the objective there is to preserve the nose of the tool. We're slowing down for those two arcs that you see. Uh, we speed up, and then before we get to the end, we do need to slow down again before we exit the, the cut. That's the, those are the main criteria that your toolpath needs to have so you can be successful with prime turning in NXCAM. Thank you.